What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey and today in the stock market we see the indices advancing higher even though we are still stuck in that consolidation zone. First up, let's take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, all right. So today in SPY, we were up 0.96% and we did see SPY bouncing off of that very critical support at 408 once again. And we are still in this consolidation range between SPY 408 and about SPY 418. Now keep in mind, even though this is looking like a bull flag, there is still going to be the possibility to break down in either direction. So if you are a bull in this zone, you need to set your risk below 408 and below our 20 simple moving average, which is now currently right around 403. The other thing I want you to pay attention to is that the 20 simple moving average is now a positive slope. So it is showing that a lot of that bearish momentum has been eliminated and we now are starting to see some bullish developments. The first evidence that we're getting bullish developments is that we are getting large green candles that are closing near the high of the day. And we now have three of them over the last couple of weeks and we are starting to see some positive momentum in the moving averages with positive slopes and they are starting to stack up. So keep in mind the bulls are going against a very strong bear trend so this is why it is taking so long for these bullish developments but these are definitely things you don't want to completely ignore. Now the bears are still out there even though we are not seeing the big bears that want to drive this market lower. A lot of those larger bears are going to be sitting up here all the way around SPY levels of 430 and we will likely also see bears showing up around 420. So the bulls are taking time off the clock while they develop some bullish technicals to gain up some momentum and some energy to battle those bears to the upside and it will be a battle indeed because the bears will not just roll over and give up easily in such a strong bear market so as a bull set your risk at 408 and 403 and you need to get a lot more cautious if we start breaking below those support levels and as a bear your resistance levels are your risk level which are above at 418 420 and 430. Another thing I want you to pay attention to is that the Bollinger Bands are starting to expand which will allow price action to move higher without any resistance from the Bollinger Bands. So we are definitely seeing more bullish developments each and every day that we continue to go sideways in this bull flag. Now if we do start losing support and we do break down below the 20 simple moving average you're looking for a retest of our support trend line which is currently right around 394 and below 394 you're looking for a retest of the low at 381 or a brand new low at 376 or 370. Don't assume we are going lower, wait for the price action to break through these critical support zones and then you'll know we're going down for that next leg lower. Let the price action do all the talking and manage your risk accordingly. Also keep in mind any bears that shorted in this zone are completely bear trapped and they are starting to wonder when they are going to cover their short positions and keep in mind the market does like to hurt the majority. So a lot of short positions that are underwater because they were shorting below this support line at 408 are contemplating when they're going to exit their short positions and give up because they are starting to get concerned about that next leg higher. So sometimes the market will let all of those shorts exit for a loss and then still make that next leg lower. So even though we are seeing bullish developments, don't completely rule out the possibility that we could still get another leg lower if we do lose this critical support. And that is why I continue to tell you to set your risk at 408 and 403. On the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, we were up 0.86% and the triple Qs are still closing above this critical support at 306. And intraday, we did bounce off of the top of that gap right around that level at 303. And that gap is still open, which is still supporting the buyers. So the buyers have critical support at 306 and that gap fill right around 300. So those are your critical risk levels as a bull in this market. And if you're a bear in this market, your critical risk on the triple Qs is up here right around 315, 318 and 330. And a lot of those big bears will likely wait until the triple Qs get around 330 before they start to attack. And yes, they are still out there. They are just resting and getting ready to battle the bulls that are on their way. So set your risk below. And if we do break down below 300, you're looking for a retest of the low right around 285. And below 285, you'll be looking for a brand new leg lower at 276.8 or 269.5. Just like on SPY, this still looks like a bull flag and we are seeing the upper Bollinger Band expanding and we are getting a positive slope on our 20 simple moving average. So overall, it does look like the bulls are starting to battle back and starting to gain some momentum. On the Dow Jones, we were up 0.83% today and the Dow Jones did get that second close back over the 50 EMA with the first close being three days ago. So we see the Dow Jones making advancements to closing above resistance. 
but the critical resistance zone that the bulls need to close above in the Dow Jones is above 333. Above 333, we will see a lot of bears waiting at the next resistance at 340, which is also going to be our resistance trend line. And that is where we will likely see the majority of the bears showing up. So it could be possible that the bulls do gap up above this resistance turn it into support, and then start marching higher towards 340. Now in the Dow Jones, you have two critical risk levels and they are below at 326 and our 20 simple moving average right around 324. And we do have a gap to fill right around 322. There is no guarantee this gap has to fill now. It could easily fill later on. So don't just assume we have to go down and fill that gap now, especially while we're above support at 326. So respect the fact that the bulls are showing some strength and we are seeing candles closing at the high of the day, which is telling us there is not currently a lot of selling pressure out there in the market. On the Russell 2000 IWM ETF, we were up 1.61% today and the small caps did get a bullish breakout close above our resistance trend line but we would like to see one more day of follow through to confirm that this is the real deal breakout and not just a short squeeze false breakout look. So just like the other indices, we have a lot of positively sloping moving averages and we are getting bullish price action in the small caps with the next bullish breakout being the close above 191.5 and above that level, we could see a bull trend developing and price actions start marching higher towards about 205. Critical downside support in the small caps is down here right around 188 and down here right around 183 and our 20 simple moving average is currently right around 181. So set your risk accordingly, and this is looking a lot more bullish, but if we do lose some of this critical support, you're looking for a retest of the low at 175. On the RK ETF, we were up 2.97%, and we did see RK bouncing off of the 20 simple moving average, and we are getting some positive slopes on the moving averages, so it is possible the RK ETF is coming back up to test resistance right around 45 to 47. Above 47, it'll look like a bullish breakout above our resistance trend line, and then you'll be looking for the next bullish test at $50 and then 52, and above 52, we will have the bullish breakout. Don't get bullish until price action confirms it, and to the downside, you're looking for support at 42, 40, and the previous low at 39. On the VIX, we were down 4.11% and the VIX did close right back on top of that support zone at 24. So if we do get a close on the VIX below 24, that will be another bullish development and that will go hand in hand with some of the bullish price action we're seeing. However, keep in mind, it's completely possible this is a support level for the VIX and we could see another spike in volatility right off of this support level at 24. But keep in mind, the VIX is closing below the previous low. So we are getting a lower low on the daily chart on the VIX. So all around, this is still a bullish development but you still need to be aware that the VIX above 24 and above 20 is still a volatile market. So be prepared for plenty of whipsaws and volatility in both directions, even though the VIX is starting to come down lower. On Bitcoin, we're currently flat trading right around 31,000 and we did see that rejection from resistance just below 32,000, which I did tell you was a possible double top, but we never got the daily close below the neckline at support at 29,000. And on the contrary, we are seeing buyers at that level driving price all the way back up above 30,000. So this is a relatively bullish signal that people are buying the dip in Bitcoin and we're not getting the confirmed double top look just yet. From here, this could now turn into a double bottom off of 29,000. So the bullish breakout above 32,000 is extremely bullish if we see that price action. And it goes hand in hand with the likelihood that I said we would retest 37,000 on the breakout. So Bitcoin above 32,000 is very likely going to be a very impulsive trip up to 37,000. And if we start closing above that resistance, we will get a confirmation of a bullish breakout and we could start to develop the bull trend. So follow the price action because right now Bitcoin is very easy to trade. You are getting a lot more bearish below 29,000 and a lot more bullish above 32,000. Keep it that simple and don't get whipsawed in between. On NVIDIA stock, we were up 0.75% and NVIDIA continues to close above the 5 EMA and we now have positive slopes on three of our four moving averages. So the next bullish breakout will be the close above 200 and then the close above 210. And above 210, we're getting a lot more bullish for the gap closes above. And if we get rejected from 200 or 210, you're looking for strong support down here at 179. And below 179, look for a retest of the low at 161. On Tesla stock, we were up 0.25% and Tesla still looks relatively weak because the price action is still closing below all the moving averages. Even though we are seeing price action holding above this support level at $700, we cannot deny that there is a lot of bearish momentum in the moving averages, which will mean that Tesla bulls will have a lot of struggle until they get price action closing all the way back above the 50 EMA or at least getting back above 763. So continue to stay cautious on Tesla because it's still possible if it breaks below 700 that it's coming down to 620 or 571. And you can start getting more bullish if we do get that bullish breakout above 775. 
but you still have strong resistance sitting just above at 828. On Apple stock, we were up 1.76% today and Apple did get a very bullish candle off of that support level at 144 and we did close back above three of our four moving averages. So the next bullish breakout in Apple stock will be the close above 150 and the bullish breakout above about 152. And above 152, we will likely see a retest of the resistance zone at 156. And above 156, we'll be getting a lot more bullish for the gap close above at 174. Now, if we do see a reversal from resistance at 150 and come down and close below 144, you're looking for support at 142 and 137. And below 137, it's still possible we come down to reach the price target at 130. But we are getting a lot more bullish price action in Apple stock in the recent weeks. So look for the possibility of that bullish breakout in the very near future. On the financial sector, we were up 0.77% and we did get another bullish breakout above the resistance trendline, but we still need to get a price action close above the 50 EMA and then we'll be looking a lot more bullish. On the industrial sector, we were up 1.34% and we did get a very bullish day closing back above all the moving averages. So the bulls are starting to gain a lot of traction in the industrial sector. On the healthcare sector, we were up 1.3% and we did get the bullish bounce off of the 20 simple moving average, which is now a positive slope. So look for the next bullish breakout to be back over this 50 EMA and then we should start to develop a bull trend. On the energy sector, we were up about 3% today and we did get the bullish breakout above $90 and we did close near the high of the day. So with the strong bull trend and the bullish breakout in the price action, it's possible the energy sector is going to start climbing all the way up to about 99.6. If this is going to be a false breakout, we should see a reversal immediately. Otherwise, it's more than likely the real deal bullish breakout. So jumping back over the S&P 500, we are still in a consolidation phase, but the bulls are building up a lot of momentum that they can use to battle the bears at critical resistance. So make sure you're prepared for either scenario, whether we break down below support or start to break out above resistance and make sure you're using proper risk management no matter which scenario we see. Don't rely on the market only moving in one direction. Also, don't forget that I have Bank Trade Alerts, which is an algorithm driven trade alert service that only trades the ETFT Triple Q and sends you all of your buy and sell alerts directly via email and text message. Even in the bear market of 2008, Bank beat the market and had a very positive return. If you're looking for more information or want to subscribe, you can click on the link in the description of this video. I also have the Stocks Channel Discord where I'm doing intraday updates and analysis and bringing new trade ideas to you weekly. If you're interested in joining the Stocks Channel Trading Discord community, you can find out how to join the Discord server by clicking on the link below. So thank you for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.